11, communication law. All right. Power of the internet and cancel someone through social media. What other powers does social media truly have when it comes to limiting free speech, limiting the First Amendment? Now entering my 11th week of communication law and almost read all of Nadine Strawson's What Everyone Needs to Know, I feel confident on talking of these, speaking on these topics. As a member of Gen Z, I must be aware of the powers of the internet while also knowing my rights, and the same could be said to members outside of Gen Z. Um, social media has more power than we think, and today we will discuss that further. We will discuss what cancel culture truly is, um, free speech rights of social media companies and their users, as well as touching on Section 230 and what it does, and finally discussing a hot take leading to free speech that has transpired during the semester. So heading into my main point, talking about what cancel culture truly is. Um, taking this point right from the Dean Strassen book, public opinion surveys indicate that many people do not exercise their legal free speech rights because they, they fear adverse reactions by their peers or other members of our society. Cancel culture is truly a terrible aspect of our society. It can mute someone's opinion and they will be scared to use their American right to free speech. People have been fired ostracized and canceled, air quotes, due to their differing opinions. Strassen further explains cancel culture on page 229. Yet the term cancel culture captures the concern that some criticism is disproportionately harsh and has an unduly speech suppressive impact on not only the directly targeted speaker, but also countless others. So all in all, free speech our uh, cancel culture, it limits free speech. Just because someone has a differing opinion on somebody on Twitter, then that person can, you know, send that tweet to the guy's employer and be like, hey, this guy believes in this, you should fire him. And sometimes they do. We've seen celebrities be canceled all the time, um, especially back in 2020. Uh, heading back into main point number two, um, the freedom of speech rights for social media companies are complicated. Uh, on page, page 231, Strassen explains social media users' freedom of rights. We'll head on to 231. We'll break it down a little bit. So, consistent with the state action doctrine, social media companies as private sector entities have no general First Amendment obligation to honor free speech rights of anyone who uses their platforms or seeks to do so. We will get into that further. We'll explain that. For the social media platform itself, it is different. Social media platforms have their own First Amendment rights to decide which speech and speakers they will host on their platforms and which they will not. With that, Strassen explained that social media companies may adopt whatever content moderation policies or community standards they choose. Breaking down Section 230 now, Section 230 states no provider or user of an interactive computer shall be treated as the publisher or speaker of any information provided by another information content provider. This means that just because someone gets in trouble for putting out something harsh online, it doesn't mean that the social media platform is at fault. It might get a bad look, but they won't be shut down. So all in all, um, just because someone on social media says something bad on a specific platform, it's not like people can go after Instagram, go after Twitter, and say, hey, this person, this platform believes in that, let's stop using that. That's just not, it's not how it works. It's up to the individual person who put this stuff out, and that makes sense. Main point number three, a hot take from this semester would have to be revolved around the presidential election. Um, people from both sides of the polls were constantly attacking each other, and it was truly terrible to see. As someone who considers himself an independent who listens to both sides, it was easy to see free speech being tarnished. If you voted for Trump, people would immediately think badly of you, and the same would go for if you voted for Harris. The counter towards both of this is to look at the facts, please. See what each person would talk about at their rallies or their debates, look at the results after each presidency slash vice presidency, and then compare to see where the nation was and the world was at. I don't think it's too much to ask for. So as a conclusion, uh, today we discuss cancel culture and what it truly is and the impact it has had on our society. We broke down social media platforms and their users' rights while also breaking down text in section 230. And finally, we discuss a hot take based around the freedom of speech. Once again, as a closure, 
Uh, as a member of Gen Z, I must be aware of the content I put out on social media to avoid being canceled while also knowing my rights. Thank you very much.